Hello, my name's Kashim Wheel, professional flat track racer from Australia. Flat track is, you know, in the name, flat track, it's flat. Uh, you turn left a lot, sometimes you go right. Reasonably quick races here in Australia, but the um, AFTN series is really good. You do six, 10, 15 lap races, and it's a lot like America. So the Australian dirt track, it's only four laps and six lap finals if you're lucky. Super fun, fast, and yeah, it's gnarly race. So you can literally just go to the shop and buy yourself a dirt bike, any brand you want. For the Australian dirt track stuff, you can just run your front motocross tire, get a trials tire rear, and you can literally just go out there and have a crack. If you want to get more serious about it, you can get your suspension lowered, get all your forks and your shock and everything lowered to how you want it. So bike set up for the flat track nats, it's pretty much what I got here. It's just the 219 front and rear. Uh, I got the Dunlop DT4s on. So with the trials tire, the forks are a little bit higher. They're only dropped about 70 mil. That is just purely because the track develops differently. It's deep, uh, you can ride the wall, so you do need that. You can run the 19 forks, but me personally, I don't. Just it's a whole different setup. With the 19s, the front end is a lot lower. Uh, that's just purely so that you can turn easier and the front wheel is pretty heavy. So the suspension is quite stiff. You could almost say it's like super cross suspension in a way. Just because it's low to the ground, can, you can throw it around a lot easier. Uh, yeah, steering dampener, you can run your steering dampener. You know, a track like Gunnedah, which is oil based, it's uh, quite sticky, quite grippy. You know, you go down the straight, hit a little bump and because the front end is so heavy with your 19s on, you can start getting the head shake. Um, they do help a lot. I personally don't run one, but a lot of people out there do, and um, no, they do definitely help a lot. Uh, gearing, what well, I run just straight out of the shop, they come with a 13 sprocket on the front. Uh, I think it's a 51 rear, but I changed that to just because of the straights. I run 13, 47, 13, 48 everywhere. I go to a track like Bathurst just because there is such a long straight for the 46 and make it you know, pretty tall, so it's got the legs down the straight. Flat track, a lot of people look at it and go, I need a fast bike. That's not always the case. I've never had engine work or motor work done to my bike. There is motor work and stuff done to my bike now just because the level of racing is getting so much faster. Uh, yeah, so I got the Vance and Hines downpipe just for the delivery of the power. You know, the power to weight ratio and stuff, they're very light. Um, as you can see, it just literally runs from there all the way up and it's, you know, there's a lot of bottom end in them and top end as well, so it's good. Here in Australia in the AF10 series, you can run a front brake, so at any truck. Uh, in America, when they race the half miles and the miles, they're not allowed front brake. I think that's just purely for safety. And in the TT tracks, then they can have a front brake. So in Australia at the moment, you're allowed your front brake. I try not to use it a lot because it is easy to tuck the front and you know, just getting used to the whole no front brake thing if that does come into play in the future. But yeah, in Australia, it's there if you need it. It's normal motocross gear. You can wear leathers if you really want to. Um, that's not necessary here in Australia. Unless you go to America, you have to. I just run my normal motocross gear, you know, just your knee guards, skins, jersey chest plate. I only started running road racing boots this year. I always ran the motocross, the Tech 10. Uh, the road racing, just purely because it's lighter, not so heavy. You can put your leg out more. You know, with the Tech 10, it was a little bit heavy going into a corner and stuff and throw my leg back a bit. And on your left boot, you run a steel shoe just to make it easier, just so you can glide your foot on the ground and you can turn easier. Just because you do get so low and it is so far, so if you don't have that and you put your foot down, it's hard to hold your leg up when you're going through it, like a, such a wide open corner where you can just put your, your steel shoe down on the ground and let, glide on the dirt. It's pretty much like a third wheel. So, and you know, if your front's going, you just stand on your steel shoe and push your bike back up. It's been around for so long and it's just the easiest way to do it. The steel shoe you can get made for your road racing boot is a lot better than your normal motocross boot. Uh, the AFCN series, yeah, so you get your time practice. This year it's time practice, I'm pretty sure. Um, you get your qualifying. Top five in the Pro 450 go from qualifying, go into a super pole to determine your place on the front row. Um, there's four rows of six, I think. And yeah, your first race is six laps, your second race is 10 laps, your third race is 15 laps, and then the last race is 10 laps. So yeah, on the Saturday, it's the long track. And then Sunday, you redo that whole schedule again. And it's the TT track, which is the one with the jump and the right hand corner and all the tight stuff. To me, a lot, it's, it's, it is fairly easy to just go on a long track, right, and hold it flat. Um, the TT sorts a lot of people out because it's tight. A lot of people out there, you know, it's, yeah, it can be tough. Definitely go into a practice day at least, just before, so, you know, there's no pressure and stuff on a race. There's a heap of practice days at Brisbane. You can just go out there, you can literally just sign yourself on, pay your money to ride, day license or whatever you have going on. Yeah, come out and have a crack.